Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Malsberg. I'm a psychiatrist and multimedia editor-in-chief at Carlat. This is an article recap from the Carlat Psychiatry Report. Today we're talking about newer medications for insomnia, specifically the dual orexin receptor antagonists, or DORAs, Daridorexin, Lemborexin, and Suvorexin. These medications are considered safer than older hypnotics and sedating antidepressants, but they come with some practical challenges. Check out a link in the description for helpful fact sheets on these medications. Let's dive in. What are orexin antagonists? Orexin neurons are located primarily in the hypothalamus and are key regulators of wakefulness, and they balance various bodily functions, including sleep. These neurons interact with orexin receptors concentrated in the brainstem's wake-promoting monoamine centers. They regulate arousal by promoting neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, dopamine, histamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. There are actually two types of orexin receptors, orexin 1 and 2. Blocking both of them induces sleep by reducing wakefulness. Remember that narcolepsy occurs when orexin neurons degenerate, so using an orexin blocker can make it worse. So it makes sense that orexin antagonists are absolutely contraindicated here. How well do orexin antagonists work? Like Z-hypnotics, DORAs are FDA-approved specifically for primary insomnia. Randomized control trials have shown that they reduce time to sleep onset, decrease nocturnal awakenings, and increase total sleep time. Suvorexin gained approval based on two pivotal trials, demonstrating improvements in both subjective and objective sleep measures. Benefits were seen as early as the first week and were sustained through one and three months. Suvorexin was well tolerated, with fewer than 5% of patients discontinuing due to side effects, and there was no withdrawal symptoms or rebound insomnia upon stopping the medication. Lemborexin performed similarly, with randomized control trials showing improvements in sleep onset, reduced waking after sleep onset, and increased sleep efficiency compared to placebo. However, it comes with a slightly higher risk of daytime drowsiness. Daridorexin is the newest DORA. It has a shorter half-life of 8 hours, compared to 15 to 19 hours for suvorexin and lemborexin. In trials, the 50 mg dose not only improved sleep measures, but also showed improvements in daytime functioning, a distinct advantage here. These medications have not been compared head-to-head. However, a network meta-analysis suggests that lemborexin 10 mg may have the strongest effect size among the DORAs though it carries a higher risk of daytime somnolence. All three medications are classified as Schedule IV, indicating a low risk of abuse. Preclinical studies found no evidence of withdrawal or reinforcing effects, but high doses tested in individuals with a history of sedative use suggest a potential for abuse. Adverse effects. The DORAs are generally well tolerated, but they do carry some risks. Common side effects are dose-dependent and include daytime somnolence and fatigue. Like the hypnotics, the DORAs carry a warning about complex sleep behaviors, like sleepwalking, sleep driving, or even sleep eating, as well as sleep paralysis and hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations. There's also a warning about the potential for worsening depression or suicidal ideation. One advantage of the DORAs is their safety record in the elderly population. No new problems stood out in the trials that focused on the elderly, even when patients were woken up in the middle of the night to assess their balance. The DORAs also have a low risk of causing next day memory problems. Among the hypnotics, only Remelteon has a similar safety profile in the elderly. Trazodone has a reputation as a safe hypnotic, but it carries cardiac risks and can cause falls by causing orthostatic hypotension. And as I mentioned before, the DORAs are contraindicated in narcolepsy due to the risk of exacerbating cataplexy. How to use the orexin antagonists. With their safety advantages over Z-hypnotics and benzos, the DORAs are a strong candidate for first-line treatment of insomnia. However, cost is a significant barrier, as many insurers require documentation of prior failures with cheaper hypnotics. Here's how to use them. Take the medication right before bed, ensuring you have at least seven hours available for sleep. DORAs take effect within 30 minutes, but their onset is delayed if they're taken with a large or fatty meal. Daridorexin has the shortest half-life at 8 hours, making it less likely to cause next-day sedation. All three medications are metabolized by CYP3A4. 
Data for transitioning from benzos or Z-hypnotics are limited. A small randomized control trial found that switching from benzos to subarexin improved sleep in patients with treatment-resistant insomnia. However, withdrawal effects from benzos may obscure any benefits of the new hypnotic, and adding subarexin to ongoing benzo treatment significantly increases sedation. Carlat verdict. Doors fill a much-needed gap in insomnia research. They offer an enhanced safety profile with decreased risk for withdrawal and dependence. But cost and lack of evidence in psychiatric disorders other than primary insomnia remain barriers to widespread clinical use. Thank you for watching this recap. For more updates on psychiatric treatments, visit the Carlat Psychiatry Report at thecarlatreport.com. We'll see you next time.